Alameen, as salatu wa salamu ala Rasul al Kareem. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to this evening's program of Masjid Umar, inshallah. The title of the talk is the Hadith of Jibra'il alayhi salam. It's a very comprehensive and cornerstone hadith. And our speaker today is Sheikh Muhammad al Maliki. He's an Imam of one of the mosques in Jeddah and Saudi Arabia. He studied with many of the major scholars of our time, Sheikh Ibn Baz rahimahullah, Sheikh Uthaymin rahimahullah, and I studied many books of our hadith, etc. Very honored to have him here today. The program is that we'll continue with the talk to Isha time. We'll break from Isha and continue straight after that. Jazakumullah khair. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu. Al atamani akmalani ala Muhammad al Rasulillah. سيد الأولين والآخرين وإمام الأنبياء والمرسلين والشافع المشفع يوم الدين وعلى آله الطيبين وأزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وصحابته الغر الميامين ومن استنى بسنتهم واهتدى بهديهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Allah, dear brothers and sisters, whoever following us or whoever joining us in this Masjid, Masjid Umar in Nottingham in the United Kingdom, or those who are following us through the internet, through the internet I ask Allah Ta'ala to increase your Iman and knowledge. As we are gathering this evening, one of the blessed times, as the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ وَلِيْلَةِ الْجُمْعَةِ فأكثر من الصلاة علي when it is the day of جمعة and the night of جمعة and the night of جمعة يا إخوان is not as calculated in the uh, Gregorian calendar or the Western way in Islam the night precedes the day as you all know once the moon of Ramadan is sighted we begin praying Taraweeh, considering that night from Ramadan. And once we sight the moon of Shawwal, we stop praying Taraweeh on that day in which we were fasting. So tonight is the night in which Rasulullah said, you do a lot of Salah and Salam, Abu him as well as the whole day of tomorrow until the sunset. At this blessed time, we gather here in this masjid, in a house of the houses, in one house of the houses of Allah, on the ear. This house, which is established to declare the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The way of his and his belief and his worship and his relationship and all of the 
آخر أمر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Bearing in mind that there is no way could lead to the paradise other than the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why Allah Ta'ala said, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يَحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Say, O Muhammad, to all of them, all people, if you are honest in your claim that you love Allah, then follow me, Allah will love you and forgive your sins. And this would necessarily mean that if you choose a way other than the way of Rasulullah in whatsoever type of worship, then Allah would not accept you. As he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كل أمتي يدخلون الجنة إلا من أبا All of my ummah will enter the jannah except for that who refused. The companion said, wondering, wondering this to happen. Who would refuse? O oh, Messenger of Allah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said, He who follows me is the one who enters the jannah. But for he who does not follow me is the one who, who refuses. And as he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, عليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعد عضوا عليها من تمسكوا بها وعضوا عليها من نواجه. Steadfast on my sunnah and the, on the sunnah of the Khulafa after me, who are Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, رضي الله تعالى عنه. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also said, من عمل عمل ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد. He, whoever, does any act of worship which is not from our matter, meaning not from our way, then it would be rejected. And Yahwan, it is not only rejected, anything rejected because that it is not from Allah, then the doer of it is going to be punished. and tortured severely. And as all the scholars who are following Rasulullah always say, إِذَا صَحَّ الْحَدِيثُ فَهُوَ مَذْهَبِي Whenever the hadith is found sound, then that is my madhab, meaning way of Worship. And that's what Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said. Al-ilmu qala Allah qala rasooluhu qala al-sahabatu laysa bit-tamweehi ma al-ilmu nasbuka lil-khilafi safahatan bayna al-rasool wa bayna wa'i faqih. The ilm, the knowledge is what Allah said what the messenger said, what the Sahaba said. What Allah said is the Quran. What the messenger said is the Sunnah. What the Sahaba said is the understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. The understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. If you try to understand the Quran and the Sunnah differently, Different from the way of the Sahaba, believe me, you are only 
reaching hellfire. As Allah Ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا He, whoever, he, whoever, Oppose, he whoever opposes the messenger after the guidance is forwarded to him clearly and follows a path other than the path of the believers, then we'll let him go with what he chooses. <coughs> but in the year after, he will only be put in Jahannam. And the saying of Allah and follows the path other than the path of the believers, all of the ulama of tafsir say the believers here mean the companions of our servants and those who follow them, of course. I forwarded my talk with this, with this ayat and hadith to draw your attention to the <coughs> importance of this hadith that we are going to go through briefly, only briefly, as if we were going to stop by every single word of it, we're going to spend nights and days. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala compi compiled a big book called the explanation of, hadith, of the Hadith of Jibreel and that was nearly about 600 sheets. This hadith, as many ulama say, that it is the whole religion. The whole religion. And that's why at the end of the hadith, the Prophet wasallam said to the Sahaba, it is Jibreel came to teach you your religion. Came to teach you your religion. The hadith is reported by Imam Muslim Rahimahullah in his Sahih. In the chapter titled by Al Iman, the Iman is Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. And there he said, after he wrote his chain of narration to the narrator of the Hadith, Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and this narration from Abdullah ibn Umar to this hadith was for a purpose that was when Ma'bad al-Juhani came up with the false statement of Qadr and then Abdullah ibn Umar was told about that he then clarified the issue of Qadr And he then reported this hadith saying, حَدَّثَنِي أَبِي عُمَرُ بْنُ الْخَطَّابِ رضي الله تعالى عنه قال بينما نحن جلوس عند رسول
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كفيه على فخذيه وقال يا محمد أخبرني عن الإسلام فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الإسلام أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطعت إليه سبيلا قال صدقت قال أي عمر فعجبنا له يسأله ويصدقه قال فأخبرني عن الإيمان قال الإيمان قال أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر وتؤمن بالقدر خيره وشره قال صدقت قال فأخبرني عن الإحسان قال أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك قال فأخبرني عن الساعة قال ما المسؤول عنها بأعلم من السائل قال فأخبرني عن أماراتها قال أن تلد الأمة ربتها وأن ترى الحفاة العراة العالة رعاء الشاء يتطاولون بالبنيان قال ثم انطلق أي الرجل فلبست أي عمر مليا ثم قال لي أي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عمر أتدري من السائل قال قلت الله ورسوله أعلم قال فإنه جبريل أتاكم يعلمكم دينكم Dear brothers and sisters This is the hadith recited for you as it was reported inside Muslim and now Let's look to the benefits in this hadith, word by word, statement by statement, close by close. However, as I said at the beginning, we are only just going to take some of the benefits that are found or that might be found in this hadith, not all of them. said that while we were sitting with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day a man came up to us whose clothes were extremely white, whose hair was extremely black. Stop by this, Ikhwan. Where did he come? This man, where did he come to see Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You answer me, please. In the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, isn't it? This has a great emphasis on the importance of clearness and highly and specially when you come to the masjid as Allah Ta'ala said Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu 
خذوا زينتكم عند كل مسجد Are you who believe? Listen to this. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, whenever you hear Allah ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, O you who believe, far'aha sam'ak. Meaning, listen carefully. فَإِنَّهَا إِمَّا خَيْرٌ تُدْعَى لَهُ وَإِلَّا شَرْءٌ تُنْهَا عَنْهُ As it is only something of goodness that you are commanded to or something of evil that you are warned against. So Allah Ta'ala is saying in the ayah, O you who believe, take your beauty with you Whenever you want to pray, the meaning of in the kulli masjid, as many of the scholars say that the word masjid here means the prayer itself. <coughs> means the prayer itself. Not necessarily to be the masjid which is the house of worship to the Muslims. But even when you want to pray at home, wherever you want to pray, you're going to be always in the good clothes. A nice smell. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَوْلَا أَنْ أَشُقَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي لَأَمَرْتُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ عِنْدَ كُلِّ وُضُوءٍ if it is not that I'm going to make it difficult for my ummah, I will have commanded them to use the siwa, the tooth stick, for every wudu. Here he did not, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say the wudu when you are going to the masjid or the wudu when you want to pray at home or wherever. But he said every wudu. And in the other hadith, he said, لَوْلَا أَنَا شُقَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي لَأَمَرْتُهُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ عِنْدَ كُلِّ صَلَىٰ If it is not that I'm going to bring my ummah to the difficulties, I would have commanded them to use the tooth stick before every prayer. And then he said, اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ Encouraged for using siwak as much as you can, and he said, "As siwaku, marbatun lil Rabbi, matharatun lil fam." Using the siwak is a matter of getting the pleasure of Allah and a matter of cleanliness of your mouth, and that's why Aisha radiallahu anha said. When she was asked, what was the first thing Rasulullah used to do whenever he comes to his house? She said, he begins with the siwa. And as we all know that Islam, Ikhwan, called for cleanliness and he commanded the excessiveness in cleanliness. Except that Islam forbid wasting of water. Proper cleanness does not necessarily mean wasting water. And Islam caused us to be always a nice looking. It does not necessarily mean to have your be it warm, that means you live in uncombed all the time. But you need to look nice. And to look nice does not mean you shave your beard. Never a man looking could be nice whenever he shaves his beard. Never.
as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, she used, whenever she wanted to swear, she used to say, وَالَّذِي زَيَّنَ الرِّجَالَ بِالْلِحَى By the one who beautified men with beard. And a beard would make man look, I don't want to say the word, then how the Prophet ﷺ used to have big beard. And to, to be in a good looking does not necessarily mean to trim the beard. But to leave it grow as it is created. To leave it grow as it is created. As Allah Ta'ala made it grow little, much, pieces, places, don't listen to the advice of the shaitan. So Islam called for two clearness. And as you see in this hadith, it is even taught to the Sahaba practically. Umar anhu said that this man who no one of, uh, of them knew him, look at that, he did not say, he did not say, وَلَمْ يَعْرِفْهُ مِنَّا أَحَدٍ He did not use a proposition love. But he used la. He said, اطلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد شواد الشعر ولا يعرفه من لا يعرفه منا أحد. None of us people of Medina know that man. Knows that man. Meaning that he is not a normal man. At that time, there were no hotels in Medina. People do not reach Medina by airplanes. So they make up themselves home and fly to Medina and come to the Masjid Nabawi like today. But they must be, they must be known and recognized by the first See, because of the dust, on clothes, on hair, uncombed hair. And this year one <coughs> means that we have to be, we have to be kind and generous whenever we have guests. Because he said, no one of us know him. That means no one come to Medina, no one come to Medina and have no place to stay. They will, all, they will always host people who come to Medina. And so we be, as Yisra said, hosting is three nights. That's the right of a Muslim. And it's not correct to see a stranger in your mosque and no one and no one come to towards him and say, Ya Akhi, Fadal, come with me. This is not a Muslim character or man. You see a stranger Muslim in the masjid. And no one even to ask him to come with him to the house. That's not correct. And then he, Umar radiallahu said, until he sat down, close underline him. Close to the Prophet Why did this man 
came close to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi This is the way how you gain ilm. As he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in one hadith, when he was sitting amongst his companions, teaching them, and uh, three people came into the masjid. One looked for any gap and he came as close as he could to Rasulullah The other just sat where the circle ended. And the third just left. After the uh, after Rasulullah finished, he said, should I not tell you the news of the three men? One came closer, so Allah came closer to him. And one felt, and one hesitated to leave, so Allah Ta'ala was kind with him. And one turned away, so Allah turned away from him. What does that mean? You have to come closer. If you want the knowledge, the, the pleasure. Ya ikhwan, the knowledge does not come through the speakers. Take it from me. The knowledge doesn't come to you through the speakers. Rather it comes through the internet, or tape, or CD, or book. The proper knowledge comes from the mouth of the teacher. Whether he is a scholar or only student of knowledge. Student of knowledge who studied properly under the ulama. Not a student of knowledge who just teach, teaches himself through the internet. Like many Western people who call themselves students of knowledge. <coughs> but a student of knowledge is the one who already went to the ulama and sat beneath their chairs or sat his knees to their knees and got the speech directly from their mouths. And that's why the man who no one of the Sahaba knew him came closer to the Prophet to limit that he that he rested his knees upon his knees, meaning the knees of Rasulullah and placed his two hands upon his thighs. Salam. Okay. We'll continue after. After what? Straight after Salah. We'll yeah, inshallah ta'ala. We'll stop here. Right after Salah ta'ala, we're going to continue inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa rahmatullah. Now, ahibati billah, my dear beloved brothers, for the sake of Allah, Continue, inshallah ta'ala, providing some of the benefits of this hadith, which as we said, that the ulama say that this hadith speaks about the whole deen of Islam. <coughs> Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar al-Khattabi radiyallahu anhu continued describing that event or incident saying that this man who came in a way that shows he is not from the people of Medina and uh, he came with a complete cleanness 
to the circle of knowledge and he came sitting closer as close as he could to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to limit that he rested his knees to the knees of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he placed his two hands on his two ties here this pronoun his and the saying is two times the ulama said we don't know whose ties were they the prophet's ties or the man's ties but either one shows the politeness respect the talib al-ilm the student of knowledge need to be a born so very close polite as they said that during the time of the salaf the student may not sharpen the pencil at the presence of the sheikh when the sheikh is giving talk they did not use even to turn the page and it is going to make a sound disturbance look at it today students of knowledge coming to the circle of knowledge with phones on <coughs> music bell dua adhan Quran, what is this? What is this? You come to the circle of knowledge, you free yourself from everything or don't come. You don't come to the circle of knowledge having your phone on and every other time your phone rings. Disturb the people, the sheikh and the students. Or you get your phone and make a call. <clears throat> Even if you wish. As I said, the students did not use even to turn the page. So that it does not make a sound disturb the sheikh. Rather that, two students sitting at the front of the sheikh talking to each other, even if it is for the dust, if you have any question, if you miss any information, you only raise your hand. And if, you, if, if the chef permits you to talk, then you talk. If he doesn't, you just write down the question you want. So when he allows, then you ask. Today, Juan, we are in a real poor state of manners. We are the best quality of mankind of manners, I suppose. Unfortunately, today we are very behind, very behind everyone in terms of other etiquettes. If the Sheikh passes an information which you find it wrong, a weak hadith, the Sheikh mistaken in ayah, the Sheikh mistaken in referring a statement to a alim which is, is not the one who said it and you knew it. Politely, politely, you correct the sheikh. Look at this, Jibreel and Muhammad, amongst the companions. Came, how, sat, how, talk, how. I remember Sheikh Abdullah Badiyah, 
One day, he came to Jeddah for a summer conference. And it happened that he was the first sheikh to give a talk. And it was after Fajr. The sheikh sat on his chair, began his talk. A while, when a young lad I'm sure that he only intended good. But as Ibn Mas'ud said, How many people intend the good but they do not reach it? <coughs> the boy raised his hand. The Sheikh continued his speech. The boy continued raising his hand. The Sheikh continued his speech. The boy, is, the boy is still raising his hand. The sheikh thought that the boy might be so polite, wants to go to the toilet. Boy, the sheikh said, yeah, what do you want? The boy said, the sheikh, the hadith you said is da'ib. The sheikh turned angry and he said, the da'ib is you. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the way. This is not the way, Akhwa. We are really very poor of manners today. A sheikh comes all the way from a masjid of Haram, a professor of hadith, <coughs> who studied under the major, major, major scholars of this era. Albani, Shinqiti, Ben Baz, Muallimi, whatsoever names you ever hear of. <coughs> and he is teaching right in front of the Kaaba. Very little number of people who can teach there. Only those ones who are found real great scholars are allowed to teach next to the Kaaba. The life of Sheikh Abdurrahman al Ajlan, Sheikh Saleh al Haydan, Sheikh Saleh ibn Fouzan, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Uthaymeen, Sheikh Rasulullah Abbas, Sheikh al Mudarris. These are the ones allowed to teach around the Kaaba. Rasulullah Abbas, a professor of Hadith, teaching opposite of the Kaaba, right in front of the Kaaba, face to face, not even inside the buildings of the mosque. But right, right there in the open area, down to the camera, comes all the way to the land of Kufa. Comes to teach the Muslims some unpolite youth. Not only ignore his class, but Warn against his class. Tie people not to go to his class. What do we need today? Al? No, we don't need Al. We need before Al, Adab. The manners. See, Akhwan, this hadith we're talking about. First thing taught us what? Al? No. The Adab. How you come to the class? Why? So that you don't disturb the sheikh by your looking. The sheikh might get nervous when he sees someone not nicely dressed. Or someone who just come from war or something like that, where there's a sweat, smell all around, the sheikh might be disturbed. And if he disturbed, he cannot give no knowledge. Look at that, Ikhwan. We are too far away. We are very behind. How come, Ikhwan, in Masjid Umar, you choose a hadith like that and you give me that time like this? How can I teach you this hadith? I told you from the beginning. I told you from the beginning. 
I may not be able to even move from the narrators. I told you the reason why Abdullah ibn Umar reported this hadith. There is a lot of pain in my heart. A lot of pain. Really a lot of pain in my heart. Because youth and especially the youth of the West, unfortunately, unfortunately, youth of the West, who yet cannot even recite Quran correctly, <coughs> consider themselves the Imma of Islam, head to head with Rasulullah, head to head with Salah al saddam head to head with Sa'd al-Shitri, head to head with Hamad al-Tawajir, <coughs> Sadhan, name long the list. <coughs> we have a problem. We have a problem. And we cannot fix it, believe me. All the Western experts cannot fix it. We have a problem in the mentality which all the doctors and professors of medicine cannot treat. Only like this hadith can treat. When we only understand it. Well, this is the treatment. The brothers asked me if it is okay to invite me and come and teach here for two weeks. I'm only going to teach this hadith. Only and a home that two weeks, five classes a day would be enough to bring you the benefits and to make sure that you guys act up on it because it is not correct to just keep delivering and when people are only taking it from one ear and bringing it out from the other. I need first to build up a wall between the two ears on everyone. I need to make sure that there is a dumb belt right in the middle of the head. So when the, when the speech gets in on one ear, heads into it and drops in the heart, waking it up to have Imam. Without that, I what's the benefit of all All information? Shaitan has the information. You think Shaitan doesn't know this hadith? By Allah, I knew it. You think Shaitan doesn't know Tawheed? By Allah, I knew it. Even before us. He knew this hadith 14 centuries ago. When this hadith was only said, he knew it. But he was success in turning people away from acting upon it. He wasn't worried about them knowing it, but he was working on making them not to act upon it. Rasulullah started telling him Islam. Islam is what is Islam? Islam that you witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. And Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. How many pillars is this? How many pillars? Huh? Three. None? Five. This, this pillar, I just, I, this statement I just said, that you bear witness that no one worthy of worship but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Huh? That is one, huh? One pillar or two? Three. Three pillars at a time? No. No. That is only one. 
one pillar of two statements. You can't rob one and take one. You can't. And this means that whoever witness the oneness of Allah away from witnessing that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah is kafir, is in the fire. Whoever doesn't believe, doesn't accept, doesn't declare that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah is not going to go to Jannah. No way. Please don't keep quiet. If you find me wrong, raise your hand. I say once again, whoever does not declare and believe with his heart that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, he is not going to go to Jannah. Even if he witnessed that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. Even if he does not worship any but Allah. You know why, Ikhwan? Can anybody tell me why? Should I tell you that? Because he's not going to worship Allah. Simply. How is he going to worship Allah if he does not take Muhammad as the messenger of Allah? What worship is he going to do? What worship? If he prays, I will ask him. Who told you to pray this way at this time? <coughs> Who told you to build up a mosque? Who told you to come to the mosque? And it's only Rasulullah, so how come you don't believe him? You don't believe in him? And lots of information under this one pillar. But I'm just going to go through to motivate you for coming when inshallah ta'ala we come again to make a conference of two weeks, five times a day on explaining this hadith. As if you know this hadith well, believe me, you're going to be a Muslim from the good right, of the good quality. But once you understand this hadith, if you don't understand this hadith like many Muslims today, you're just going to occur a name on the Kariya name. I don't want to make no one kafir. I don't make the fear. But I say these Muslims today, they don't know what is their religion. Beautiful religion. If they would know it. Then he said, he saw Salam say, wa tuqeem as salah. Tuqeem as salah. Look at this tuqeem. In Arabic we have two words that means perform. Tuqeem to addi. In the whole Quran, in the whole hadith, you never find salah except with tuqeem, aqam, yuqeem, yuqeemuna, aqamu, aqimu, aqim. That's the only word used. Although, all of this gives the same meaning of that which is performed. But in Arabic, yuqimuna is different from yuaduna. Yuaduna means you do it. You just do it. Like most of the Muslims today, they just do it. They just pray. And that's why this prayer does not stop them from evil which Allah promised. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. We still see the Muslim doing fahsha and munkar. Fahsha is the evil speech, munkar is the evil acts. We still see the Muslim doing these things. Why? Because the salah is not abun aqimu. It is abun addu. Just come, pray, go. Doesn't know what is said, what he said, what he read. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything. Problem. Problem. I don't want to go too deep. I have a lot to say about Salah. 
That's why I told you we need really long time to explain this hadith. Then he said, وَتَصُومَ رَمَضَانَ تَصُومَ رَمَضَانَ What can fasting do? What is fasting? Most of the Muslims are fasting. Holding of eating, drinking and sexual intercourse from dawn to the sunset. Good. What about the riba? What about the riba? Fasting and dealing with the riba. Good. What about songs? Fasting and listening to songs. Good. What about looking to the evil? Watch the evil. Fasting and watching the evil. The Salaf, some of the Salaf used to win Ever Ramadan enters, they close their shops and leave their homes and remain seated in the masjid from this from the witnessing of the crescent of Ramadan till the witnessing of the month the crescent of the of Shawwal. They don't leave the masjid. When they were asked why. They said, we are protecting their fasting. <coughs> protecting their fasting. In Muslim countries, in Muslim society, in Muslim environment, no women naked outside. No music played outside. No hammer sold outside. But yet, they want to protect their fasting. Look at Muslims today. Fasting. Going, coming here in these streets, watching every type of evil. How can this fasting be protected, the Akhwan? Allah knows best. And then he saw tell them, say, but to is zakah. To is zakah. And you give out the obligatory charity. The obligatory charity. How many of us were supposed to give out the charity? How did you give it out? Many of us just give it anyhow. If he gives it out, he just give it to anyone. He does not even care if it is someone who is poor or not. Yeah, but I don't know poor. I was taught this even in Jiddah. And I told him, you guys doing what? Saying what? I'm from Jiddah. And I'm only 50 years. And I know many poor people. Because all of this modern Jiddah up in the north, and in the East was nothing only 40 years ago or 30 years ago. All of these people were in the old Jeddah, were poor. Now, when they come to me as Imam of the Masjid and say, Ya Sheikh, take this account from us, we don't know any poor. I said, Akhi, we don't know any poor, I don't want to know you. I don't want to know you. How can you say that you don't know any poor? Abu Bakr al Sadiq knew a woman who is very old, had to move, had to do her things, and was alone. Abu Bakr al Sadiq did not ask nobody, did not tell no one. He used to go sometime, a long time before Fajr, to her house, clean it, milk the sheep, prepare her food, and then go to the masjid in the darkness. So now one season. Umar 
came to know about this woman. Look at this, thing. two noble Sahaba, great Sahaba. Now everyone else did not know, but why Umar and Abu Bakr know? Because they look after me, look after these people. They want, they want, they chase. Who's poor, who's poor? Umar went one night, or before Fajr, just before Fajr. He found everything done. He asked her, she said, Abu Bakr came and did that. He said, well, next day I'll come earlier. He came earlier. Abu Bakr done it. <laughs> Third night, he done it. Omar gave up to <coughs> Up until the Prophet passed away and Abu Bakr became the Khalifa. Omar said, this is my chance now. Khalifa is too busy. <coughs> he came and he found the same thing done. Asked her, who did this? She said, Abu Bakr. He said, I will never ever compete Abu Bakr. <laughs> Look at that. He returned the zakah, he gave the zakah. And then he said, وَتَحُجَّ الْبَيْتِ تَحُجَّ الْبَيْتِ إِنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا and you do the pilgrimage, you perform Hajj to the house of Allah. If you are able to, if you are able to financially, health-wise, security-wise, how many today come? Oh, but I want to buy, to buy, I want to buy a car. I want to buy, I want to change my furniture. I want to do my business. What about Hajj? And then those who go for Hajj. They cheat in order to go for Hajj. They cheat. They swore by Allah that they never did Hajj before. They swore by Allah that they don't have money. So they take free Hajj. They go get riba loan to go for Hajj. إذا حجت بمال أصله سحت فما حجت ولكن حجة العيرة. He performed Hajj with money which is collected from Haram. Then you have never done Hajj, but the camels done Hajj. The camels which carried you to there, these are the ones that had, but not you. Many people in Saudi, you know, you know the law of Hajj. Who are living inside Saudi, whether Saudi or not Saudi, will do Hajj once every five years. Oh, this is a man-made law. Yeah, man-made law. And you are taught to obey this man. When this law does not contradict with the Sharia of Allah. And Allah did not make it up and better upon you to do Hajj every year. If you've done it once, they did not say only once a life. They say every five years to give a chance for others. <coughs> they say no one to do Hajj except with a Hajj company so that they provide you a place to stay in Mina. So that you don't go and block the roads. And stay living, camping under the bridge and under and the ambulance cannot <coughs> give services to one who may need it until he dies because of you. And I saw this in my eye. An ambulance to cut a distance of around <coughs> 700 meters. It took more than four hours. Four hours. And no one wants to move. And the ambulance, you know. So, and others go in their normal clothes. <coughs> because in the checkpoint, they don't stop them. And when they are in, they put on their arm and say, I slaughter. What slaughter? 
Do you think that Allah is in need for your sheep? <laughs> and we don't respect the sha'ir Allah. وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ إِنَّا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Who respect the rituals of Allah, that is from the piety in the hearts. And some others sneak and smuggle from desert. What is this? What is this? And he said, no, I want to go and do hajj. Why? You want to go and do hajj? Go. Problem. Anyway, and then he, the man asked the Prophet or said, <coughs> said to him, "You have told the truth." Umar said, "We were amazed at him asking him, and then telling him that he told the truth." Why, Ikhwan? Because now this man is supposed to be the student, and Rasulullah is supposed to be the teacher, and you will never ever authenticate your teacher. The teacher, he is the one who authenticates you. You don't give certificate to the teacher. Teachers do not receive certificates from the students, otherwise every teacher needs Shelves and shelves and shelves. But the students need the certificate of the <laughs> because he is more knowledgeable than them. Look at it today. Look at it today. A young man born and grown amongst the kuffar, knowing nothing, learned some Arabic. Got his knowledge from internet and translated books. Head to head with Rasulullah. Over 60 years. More than 50 years is in knowledge. Learning, teaching. And now this young is head to head, man to man. Look at this hadith. Why the Sahaba were amazed for him telling him, you have told the truth? Because normally it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that, that the student say, yeah, teacher, you are right. You brought the proper answer. It doesn't work like that. But today, only in Islam, you see it work. But in the faculty of Medicine, faculty of chemistry, faculty of physics, no one can do that. No one can do that. But only when we come to the circles of knowledge of Islam, people so bold, so arrogant to do that. To do that. They need more with the yans. They need more with the yans. To tell them, you are the weak sit down. Then the man asked, tell me about Iman. Isa Sallam said, Iman, to believe in Allah. What does that mean? Islam to say, La ilaha illallah. Iman to believe in Allah. And yani could a person be a, believe, be a Muslim without believing in Allah? <laughs> Could he be a Muslim only by saying La ilaha illallah? La ilaha la. You can't be a Muslim until you believe in the six pillars of Iman. As told and in general. And then your Iman increases by learning more and more about these pillars. Your Iman becomes stronger. But it does not necessarily mean that you can't say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah without believing in Allah's names and attributes and you still be Muslim. No. No. You can't. It doesn't work like that. You have to believe in Allah as the Lord, as the God, and as the one who has the perfect names 
and the beautiful, the beautiful names and the perfect attributes. I mean the most, the most beautiful names and the most perfect attributes. And then he said, and he believed in his angels, in general and in a specific, in a specific as mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. He believed in his books, that he, Allah Ta'ala, sent down books on his prophets and messengers. <coughs> in general. But he Allah Ta'ala made us to know only five of them. Tawrat, Al-Injil, Zabur, Al-Suhab, Al-Furqan. Tawrat for Musa, Injil for Isa, Zabur for Dawood, Suhab for Ibrahim and Musa, and Furqan for Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa to believe in the books does not necessarily mean you go and get the Bible or the Torah and read from it. No, this is not correct. And some of our elders said not even for debating. Not even for debating. And became now a style today. One takes the Torah or the, the, the Bible, read from it, and come to read the Christians and Jews. No, this is not the way. We are not in a weak religion that we don't have evidences to bring. But we believe in the books that Allah Ta'ala sent down books. What is in the hands of the Yahud today of the Torah is not the Torah that Allah Ta'ala sent down. Parts of it is still remaining in this book that they are. But most of it is man word. Is man word. As well as the Bible. Some of it is still remaining from the Bible that Allah Ta'ala sent to Isa. But most of it is man word. You believe in his messengers. You believe in his messengers. All of them in general. When they say messengers, that means you believe in the prophet and messengers. All of them. That Allah Ta'ala sent 124,000 prophets. From amongst them were 315 messengers. And you believe in those whom Allah Ta'ala named to you. And as the Prophet named, you believe in them. And you have to love them all. Be careful. Do not be ignorant, arrogant. When a Christian does or says anything against Prophet Muhammad, you go and say something about Isa. Be careful. You might come out of Islam. You might you might find your friend there in Jahannam. <clears throat> Be careful. If you don't know how to defend, if you don't know how to respond and say Astaghfirullah when you hear the wrong. Just say Astaghfirullah and leave it. And you believe in the last day. Believing the last day is a long, long talk. Believe in it from the time the soul leaves the body. That is the beginning of it. That is the beginning of it. They say to someone who is buried, he was taken to his last destination. Wrong. Wrong. He is now taken to his first destination of Akhirah. He is now just brought to the first destination of the Akhirah. Al Qabr awwal manazil al Akhirah. The Qabr, the grave, is the first place 
or station of the Akha. You have three stations in the Akha. The cover, the plain down of resection, and then either Jannah or fire. Either Jannah or fire. And then, he said, and you believe in the Qadr, the decree, the destiny, the good of it, and the bad of it, all from Allah. <coughs> As there is no any other creator other than Allah. Don't say only the good is from Allah. Okay, who created the bad? Who created the harmful decrees? It's Allah. Nothing, no one else but Allah. And you have to believe in that, be firm in that, and be pleased with that. Be pleased with what Allah Ta'ala written for you. Al Hassan al Basri one day passed by a young man sitting sad. He asked him, What is this sadness for? Is it for something that Allah Ta'ala wanted it to exist but it didn't exist? He said, No. No, if Allah wanted anything to exist, it cannot. Does accept existence. He said, okay. Is it something that Allah Ta'ala did not want it to exist, but it existed? He said, no. It cannot exist if Allah Ta'ala doesn't want it to exist. He said, then why are you sad? Why are you sad? Take your case to these two. Your car stolen. Is it something Allah Ta'ala wanted to happen or not? Yes. By your son. But it doesn't mean you feel happy and of course. But we mean why you are sad to the limits that you object the qadr of Allah. It is said that a young man <coughs> grown as orphan poor and he loved the mosque all the time in the mosque they called him the beacon of the mosque always holding the Quran reciting before Fajr people come he's there anytime in the day between Fajr and Dhuhr he is still there people before Dhuhr come he is still there People go for lunch, he's still there. People come for Asr, Maghrib, Isha. That boy is still there. Long time. One day, he wanted to marry his cousin, his father and her father are brothers. Her brother, her father, is rich. Not like his nephew was poor. His nephew came to him. Uncle, I want to marry your daughter. He said, you? My daughter marry you? Who do you think you are? Sorry, he go out. The boy went sad. Guess what? He went to the mosque, stood by the gate, saying, I worship you for all this time, and I ask you only this thing, and you did not give it to me. This is Kufr. This is Kufr. During the Gulf War, I was coming out of my office when a car, a Muslim car cleaner, saw me and he said, Ya Sheikh, Ya Sheikh. You know, during the Gulf War, he said, Ya Sheikh, where is he? How he accept? I said, Akhi. You might have come out of Islam. You don't talk about your Lord like that. You don't talk about your Lord like that. You raise your hand and you say, Ya Allah, help us. But you never say, why is that? Allah Ta'ala <laughs> says, in the Quran, لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون 
is never to be questioned for what he does, but they all are going to be questioned. So you know how to know the proper understanding of Qadr. As I said, it's only just a yani, type of motivating. We're not going through the hadith properly. As I said, we need really to make it and a promise if I come back here for a 10 days course or two weeks, we're going to go through it. But you need to free yourself five times a day. Not for long. Not for long. I'm not going to hold you for long. After Fajr until the sunrise. Then go work. Don't go sleep. Borek al ummati bi bukuriha. Here you have a bad habit. Once the Imam of Fajr says, Salaamu Alaikum, everyone scatter. Where to? I ask. Where are they going to? Was alone in the masjid in Manchester. So what about with these people? Say so they go sleep. Including the Imam, everyone. So subhanallah. There in Medina people do not leave that fast. They wait. One Sheikh giving us of tafsir. One many circles of Quran recitation. One doing the dhikr of morning until the sun rises. And then they pray to work and everyone goes home or work. Here yeah, they sleep. SubhanAllah. You guys are different in everything. <laughs> you guys are different in everything. <laughs> I then asked him, tell me about Ihsan. He said, and oh, this is this is the missing pillar <coughs> of this deen. The, little, the missing rank of this deen, which very, very, very seldomly you can see today. You really need binoculars to see it today. Ihsan, Ihsan, that's, unless it is a name given to a man, but not as an act of worship. And ta'bud Allah, he said, and ta'bud Allah, ka'annaka tara. It is to worship Allah, as if you see him. Why did the Rasulullah say that? Let me just simplify. When you see your boss, what type of protection you're going to make? Huh? How many times you're going to excuse going to toilet, going to drink a tea, going... Huh? Everything excellent. Right? So Rasulullah says that when you are Abu Ihsan, then when you worship Allah, you worship like, you worship Him like if you see Him. Like if you see Him. That is the rank of Ihsan. Means you make your salah perfect. Rasulullah, whenever he leads the prayer, the Sahaba says, We hear. Aziz, Aziz al Murjan. Aziz is the sound coming from the boiling water on in the boat over the fire, blah, 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 like that. When he recites the Quran, they hear it, <laughs> trying to hold it. Of course, not like what we hear today in Ramadan. Ah, this is not correct. <laughs> this is most of it showing off. You struggle, struggle. When you struggle against crying. You will have this song like this. Rasulullah the Sahaba said, We used to hear it. Abu Bakr al Siddiq told Aisha, Tell Abu Bakr to lead the prayer when he was sick. She said, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Bakr is a, prayer, a person whenever he says the Quran, he cries. People cannot know what he says. Look at that. Umar al Khattab, and was said that two black. Lines were drawn on his cheek, on his face, from tearing, from crying. Why is that? Why is that? This is the Quran because the Ihsan, because they reached the Ihsan, Yahwah. 
Today, the Quran is recited. Those who cry, cry for the voice of the reciter. Same ayah recited by a different one, that they make no sense. Huh? So the cry was for the reciter, not for the Quran. The one who has a, a live heart, when he recites, he cries. When he recites, he cries. Wallahi, if we have the proper Iman, which leads us and elevates us to the Sun, if we have that, Wallahi, no one can even finish Surah Al-Fatiha. Guess what Surah Al-Fatiha, as the Prophet said, Al-Quran Al-Azim. It is the Quran. Every major meaning in the Quran is found in Surah Al-Fatiha. Look at that when you say, Alhamdulillah, who is Allah? Rabbil Alameen. People today are just reciting it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. This is not correct, Akhi. This is not correct. We have to build up our Imam. The rest of the hadith is about the hour and the signs of hour, which we already passed many of them. And we are just about to watch and witness the major signs of the hour. May Allah Ta'ala take us before that. Because as the Prophet said, the hour does not exist, exist except when there are only the most evil ones of the creation. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to take us before we come to that time. And I'll just end up the talk promising to go through it, through this hadith, inshallah, on the uh, next visit, inshallah. But I want to end up by emphasizing small or giving small advices and how to increase your iman. Let's see this now. Let's look at this. The prayers. How many of us pray night prayers? How often? How many of us pray duha? How often? How many of us keep on the rawatib? Two rak'ah before fajr, four rak'ah before duhr, two rak'ah after duhr, two rak'ah after maghrib, two rak'ah after isha, constantly. How many of us keep his wudu? Whenever he breaks his wudu, he go again wudu and do a turak ala bilal. That is a salah. Come to the siyam. If we mention siyam, we all remember Ramadan. Why? Why? Where is the siyam? You are in a cold country. Even the summer. Don't tell me the summer is summer. Your summer is winter for us. <laughs> Wallahi, when I come in the summer, I always carry with me vitamin C. Because it is winter for us. If you go to Medina, every Monday and Thursday, every 13th, 14th, 15th of every month, you see people before Maghrib in Masjid al Nabawi sitting, waiting for the Mu'addin. Poor, rich, People work under sun, but they prefer to fast. That increases your iman. Come to the graveyard. If I ask many of you, maybe you don't know where is the graveyard in Nottingham. And if you know it, you even don't know which side is the Muslim, which side is the non-Muslims. Because very Rarely you go there. Maybe when there's a janata of uh, someone you know. But Rasulullah says, visit the graves, it gives you the reminder of the Akhra. And people of Medina during the time of Rasulullah were told that you and nothing harm. You don't need that. You don't need to be reminded by the Akhra. SubhanAllah. 
صدقة زكاة زكاة واجب عمل قدر الزكاة أهل صدقة عمل عمل اللي تعمل زكاة صدقة the masjid keep calling for donating to يعني improve the facility some masjid are only rented they want to collect for rent and collect for buying a facility for masjid because the owner is covered any time can say close your masjid we don't want salah out but they don't donate they don't donate some of the salaf used to go scholars used to go work hard carry rocks like that and when they are told why they said we want to give sadaqah they go work and take some little money and they give it as sadaqah where is your sadaqah where is your sadaqah you know what i mean gratefulness to your parents where is it all the time the youth with themselves with their friends do not care about their parents one tells you is a river and his parents are kuffar and who told you that when they are kuffar you do not give them the right it's a way to increase your iman to be grateful to your parents one another tells you his parents are brandies another tells you Oh, his parents are not celebrities, they are khwanis. From where do you get this understanding? Parents are parents. Ibrahim a.s. his father was not a khwani, was not brailwi, was not mushrik, was the one who used to make the idols for people to worship. Yet Ibrahim calls him, Ya Abati, Ya Abati, Ya Abati. It does not mean you agree with him and his shirk and his bid'ah and his partisanship, but you give him his right as a father. You give her his right, uh, her right as a mother. When Jah look at Surah Luqman, when Jah hadak ala antusha kabi ma leisa kabi ilmun falat alqumma. When they struggle against you to make you. Join them and their false worships and worship other than Allah, then do not obey them. Many Muslim youth take this path, do not obey them. And give them a good company in this dunya, in this holy life. Even if they are mushrikeen, and mushrikeen who do not accept your Islam who mock you, who bother you, who struggle against you to make you come to their worships. Do not obey them. Do not join their, their falseness. But do not deny their rights. Do not deny their rights. They have right with you. Akhi and Ukhti. I mean to say, Juan, there are many ways to increase your Iman. You guys here are in the oven of Iman. You know what I mean? You are inside the oven of Iman that burns Iman like that. So be careful. You are struggling. You have to struggle to keep your Iman by doing all these things. Fast optional days, stand in night prayers, stay from <coughs> the time of salat to the other, be familiar with the masajid, stay in the masjid as long as you can. This is your Jannah on the earth. This is your Jannah on the earth. Not the football field, not the gym, not the cafe. But here, in the Messiah, sit. If there is a circle of knowledge, sit. No circle of knowledge, circle of Quran, sit. No circle of Quran, you recite Quran. If you don't know how to recite Quran, sit to eat, uh, at least say Astaghfirullah. And be in the masjid. As long as you can. As long as you can. Protection. 
See now we spend how long time? We didn't see naked women. We didn't hear any music. We didn't hear anything that bothers us. Alhamdulillah. Surrounded by the angels. Covered by the mercy. The tranquility was sent on us. Above that, Allah Ta'ala is pleased with us. And He takes the angels as witness that He forgives for everyone in the sitting. May Allah Ta'ala make us from those. Allah Ta'ala A'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad ala alayhi wa sahbihi. And I would just like to apologize of taking the questions as uh, I came from trouble and it's already 9.30. Tomorrow I have khutbah in Brixton Mosque and two lectures and then flying late at night and at 10.20 to Istanbul and staying there eight hours, going back to Medina. So I have a long journey. If you just bother me to go have some rest. Jazakumullah khair. And promise inshallah next time we continue that move wide. Assalamu alaikum.